I let the peace of God rule in my heart. It quiets my mind from fearful thoughts. And when problems arise like storms on the sea, the peace of the Lord is upon me. I let the peace of God rule in my heart. It quiets my mind from fearful thoughts. And when problems arise like storms on the sea, the peace of the Lord is upon me. When cares of this life, its worries and strife, try to enter into your life, it's all up to you. Which way will you choose? Will you worry and sin, or let the peace enter in? Peace enter in. I let the peace of God rule in my heart. It quiets my mind from fearful thoughts, and when problems arise like storms on see the peace of the Lord is upon me when tempted to fret and get all upset just remember the one who's inside of you you have overcome yes the battle's been Peace assures in why your mind stayed on him. Mind stayed on him. I'm gonna let the peace of God rule in my heart. It quiets my mind from fearful thoughts. And when problems arise, like storms on the the peace of the Lord is upon me. I let the peace of God rule in my heart. It quiets my mind from fearful thoughts. And when problems arise like storms on the sea, Peace of the Lord is upon me. The peace of the Lord is upon me. Ooh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. God's peace is just so wonderful mm. to just, you know, be around and enjoy in our lives and truly thank God for His peace. Yeah, let the peace yeah. of God rule your heart and you'll find things becoming more simpler and easier in your life. When troubles and trials and tests come your way, when you let God's peace handle the situation, when you live out of the peace of God, you will find things happening more easier. That's right. Praise God for His Praise peace. Praise the Lord. And that's what we want to talk about today on this yeah. episode about the peace of God that can truly, you know, change your life and mm. keep you stable no matter what comes your way. Yeah. So right in, let's go to the scriptures in the book of Colossians chapter 3, talking about his peace. <clears throat> it's such a wonderful thing to know that when you have the peace of God, you can face life boldly. Yeah. You know? challenges come in, you are able to overcome them being led by that peace that is inside of you. Mm. And that's what this song says about letting the peace of God rule your heart. Mm. So we're going to explain that in a moment. 
Let's read this scripture in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. It says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And be thankful. Now that first part of the verse says, Let the peace of God rule your heart. Mm. What, is it, what does it mean to rule your heart? Now it doesn't mean like a controlling manner. But you see, our hearts are like containers, right? There's so much of things that is filled in our heart. Well, people can't see, you know, our heart or anything. Mm. They only know, each individual only know their own hearts. Mm. And the Bible says in this verse here that He wants our heart to be filled with His peace, yeah. right? Rule means like to be led by the peace. And directed, <clears throat> That's yeah. right. And then it says, let it rule your hearts through Christ Jesus. So, in other words, every day in your life, when you have to make decisions and, you know, take certain steps, you want that peace of God to rule you mm. instead of um, being ruled by fear or any other force like that. Yeah. You know, it's the peace of God that should rule our hearts. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, when we didn't know Jesus, when we were without Christ in this world, when problems arose and situations came across our way, sometimes we would... Uh, talk the negative, talk the situation all the time and just be afraid. You know, we would say words like, I'm afraid, I don't know how to handle this. And um, but after we get saved, you know, Jesus, He talks about in His Word, the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us. He is our guide and He will direct us in the way we should go. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of peace. And it's, it's easy to make decisions when you're led by peace, mm. you know, rather than being making decisions in haste and in worry. Actually, in haste and in worry is not the time to yeah. make decisions because sometimes you can tend to make the wrong decision at that mm. time. Yeah, that's very true. In fact, we see that the Bible says that one of the fruits of the Spirit, in other words, one of the, one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you is that He produces peace in your life. Right. Right? He's not going to control you and make you afraid. Mm. He's going to enable you to be at peace no matter what situation comes by your way. Mm. And so uh, you may say, well, what if my heart is full of fear? I, I'm not ruled by peace like this scripture says. You know, my heart is ruled by fear. I, I just can't get rid of it. Mm. Well, I want to encourage you that there's another verse that tells you that God has not given you a spirit of fear. Yeah. Let's just read that scripture. It's really powerful. Like I said earlier, our hearts are like containers. You know, we can either store the right thing in it or we can either store the wrong thing in it. Mm, that's the reason in the Bible it constantly tells us to guard our hearts mm. and protect it with all diligence. Guard your heart in a sense, you know, um, the way we put stuff, like you said, our heart is a container. The way we put stuff into our heart is through our eyes and through our ears and listening to the opinions of other people and stuff. Mm. And, you know, Jesus also said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And so it's a good thing to keep track and check what are we watching? What are we listening to that is, you know, maybe producing fear in us mm. and causing us to make decisions hastily and maybe say things that we wouldn't normally desire to say and happen in our lives. Yeah, that's right. In fact, um, you know, let's, let's go to that scripture first and we'll talk more about how we can get rid of fear and keep our hearts steadfast yeah. on the Lord. Let's read this scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. <clears throat> it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So here we see very clearly that God says that fear does not come from Him, right? He says that I'm not the author of fear, mm. right? He says I'm only the author of power and love and a sound mind. Mm. But that part sound mind really stands out there, yeah. right? See, when you're in fear, your mind is not at peace, mm. right? Your mind is racing and thoughts are coming all around you and you're, you don't know what decision to make. That's what fear does. Yeah. But God says here, He has not given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So what you can do is, you know, when fear comes your way, the, the best thing that you can immediately say is recognize, first of all, that fear. When it comes into your mind, recognize it and then say, no, in Jesus' name, God did not give me the spirit of fear. Right. This fear did not come from God. 
God only has given me power, love and a sound mind, mm. right? And if we look at those three things, those are three powerful, you know, things that are noted there. Yeah. When you see power, like we saw in the previous episode, how God has given us authority over fear and sickness and all kinds of things, mm. right? He has given you power. You know, you don't have to let that fear rule your life because God says, I've given you the authority over fear. Yeah. Yeah. So when the fear comes, immediately you stand up and you say, in Jesus name, I resist you, spirit of fear. Yeah. The way we resist those thoughts and those um, temptations of fearing and being afraid is by speaking words mm. out of our mouth. When you speak this scripture, this scripture is loaded with the power of God. When you say, Lord, you have not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, you have given me a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Your putting those words into your heart and you're filling it up. Like you said, if it's a container, mm. you're putting those words there and it's going to eventually come out yeah. of your mouth and you're going to see your circumstances also changing. Mm. See, the power of our words is, is so important because even this world that we're living in, God created it with words. He spoke, let there be light and there was light. So words are very powerful. If we can start speaking words of God from, from the Word of God, the promises of God, we can see a lot of things changing in our lives. And the way we get rid of fear, like we said, when our heart is a container, the way we get rid of all that fear is by resisting that fear. Resisting, yeah. Right? Don't tolerate the fear. Don't keep speaking the fears. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. And when you do that, you're actually filling up your heart, which is the container. You're just letting your heart get full of fear. Yeah. Right? But you can change that because fear God has given you the ability. Is actually, fear is actually from the enemy. Mm. And he comes to steal the peace of God from us. No, he doesn't he want cannot. us to walk in, in yes. peace. Yes. If we are led by the peace of God, he cannot steal it from us. Mm. Because even joy is the same way. Jesus said, I give unto you joy and no man can take it away from you. That's right. And so, like you said, resist the enemy. In mm. one scripture in James, it talks about resist the devil. See, he's a persistent fellow and he doesn't, you know, want you to walk in the peace of God. So he will bring situations and troubles and things against you to work against us so that, you know, we will fall into prayer of fear and worry and start, yeah. you know, doubting God's word. That's what he wants us to do. Yeah. Doubt God's word. That's right. That's the worst thing that the enemy will try to do on you. He wants you to doubt the word. Mm. Even though you're saying scriptures like this, God has not given me a spirit of fear. The enemy will put another thought and say, well, but you're still afraid, right? Yeah. You remember this thing, you know, that makes you afraid, right? He'll just immediately, he'll try to make you doubt God's yeah. word. Then you need to recognize, okay, I recognize fear is from the enemy. Then also recognize doubt is from the enemy. That's right. Right? Recognize that and use your authority. This verse says God has given you the power, right? Not others to do it for you. You can use the power that God has given you and say in the name of Jesus, Take your hands out and get out and go in Jesus name to the devil. Mm. Don't be afraid to say those words because the authority is yours. God literally says here, the authority is yours. Yeah. It's like a king, you know, if he didn't use his authority, I mean, he's a king, but if he just remains in control with everybody, what everybody's saying, then he's, and he has the authority. Yeah. So he's just like a, you know, just like a puppet. Yeah. That's what everybody says he'll do mm. when he doesn't even realize that he has the authority. Yeah, right. And so that's how we got to see ourselves. Mm. Sometimes we're just sitting out there and, and saying, God, you, you take away the fear. But mm. he says, I've given you the power to do it. Right. He says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, mm. but he wants you to take, use the authority. And how do we use our authority? By speaking words. Speaking words against that fear. Yeah. Right? And the second part in this verse says, that God has given us a spirit of love, okay? Second Timothy, where in the same um, verse, Second Timothy 1, 7, God says, He has given us love, right? Mm. You see, the love of God drives out fear. Yeah, right? And that we can read that scripture yeah. too even. We can read that in First John, First John 4. It's so amazing how in this Bible, God mentions many times, fear not. Mm. Right? Yeah, that's right. He, he tells so many, times, many times, fear not. Don't be afraid of the situation. I am with you. Mm, because fear, in fact, started from the beginning. Mm. Fear also is, you know, it's a lack of, you know, you know, when um, Adam and Eve, when they disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, the first emotion that they felt that was negative was fear. Mm. 
And you know, God doesn't want us to live in fear. It's yeah. not His desire. He wants us to overcome fear. And like we said, the number one way you can do that is by resisting the devil. Resist him and say, in Jesus' name, I command you. It's a spirit, right? It says yeah. here, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. I command you, spirit of fear, to get out. Yeah. And it will. And so we can even see in First John 4 about the love of God. So we have been uh, discussing also about God is love. Mm. We, we talked about that too. So everything about God and what He does for us, He does it through love because He is love. So that love has been put into our hearts. God's love has been put into us. Right. In verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment, and he that fears is not made perfect in love. Mm. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell on the inside of us, He's a perfect spirit. And so, you know, maybe you're facing things and challenges around you, but with that perfect spirit on the inside, it says here, perfect love casts out fear. The Holy Spirit in you will help you to cast out that fear by resisting with your words and saying, I cast out the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Mm. You cannot torment me, right? God's love is made perfect or yeah. mature and full in us, Definitely. inside us. You know, it says here, it's interesting, it, fear has torment. Yeah. And I think we already know that fear torments a person, right? You can't, sometimes fear will, you know, keep you to the point where you can't sleep at nights. Yeah. And fear will, you know, cause you to the place where you're afraid of other people, what others might say of you. You know, there's all kinds of fear. Yeah. And the Word of God gives us the answer how we can come out of that fear, right? Mm. You can see how many times in the Bible how God told many people, He said, fear not. And then we see how he started imparting his image onto the inside of them, yeah. right? So many stories in the Bible how when God told them to do something and they said, well, you know, I don't have that qualification, I'm not yeah. able. And God had to, because see, inside their image was full of fear. Yeah. God had to change that image on the inside of them. Mm. He had to tell them, you know, fear not, I am with you. I am your shield, I am your reward. Yeah. And he built his image in them. And that's why they were able to do the things that they did because they changed their image on the inside, Yeah. right? And so you can see here, when we, let's go back to 2 Timothy 1, 7, mm. right? So you may be asking, how do I get rid of fear? Start with this verse here in yeah. 2 Timothy 1, 7. It says, God has not given us. So like we've been discussing, you can put your name in there and you can say, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Right. Right. And you keep saying that over and over again in every situation. But he has given me power. He has given me the authority over fear. Mm. Right. He has given me. I don't have to sit there and, and say, I can't help it. Fear is just there. No, you use your authority. You yeah. say, in Jesus' name, I command you fear to get out of my life. Mm. Greater is Jesus living yeah. on the inside us right. than the enemy out there in the world. Yeah. In First John 4, it talks about Jesus in us. He is greater mm. and He is powerful. So you are a powerful person. You mm. are way powerful than the enemy. You don't have to say, I'm afraid of the devil. I'm afraid of what he will do to me and maybe... Uh, he can, you know, kill me and stuff like that. You can say, I'm strong. Mm. I'm strong in the Lord. I'm stronger than the enemy mm. because greater is Jesus in me. Greater is These he. are power promises that you can speak out of your mouth. See, and God, He also said in, in, his, in his word that He backs up the words that He has spoken. That's when right. we speak it, like when we talk the promises of God, He sends His angels to work on our behalf mm. concerning those words. That's right. It's like you're on a battlefield. Mm. You know, if you just stand there and wait and do nothing, the enemy is just going to come and, you know, destroy you, yeah. right? You go out to battle and here you are armed with all your shield and your sword and your weapons and all that stuff. And then you go out to battle and you say, well, I guess, you know, God will help me. I'll just stand there and wait and do nothing, yeah. right? Then you're going to oh. get destroyed. Yeah. You know, the enemy is just going to come. Yeah. You got to fight in order for you to win the battle. Yeah. Right? This word is our sword. That's right. And the promises of God, when it's uh, coming out of our mouth, it's powerful. Mm. And so, like you said, even we're in a battle. When we speak these words of God, it's like, you know, using your authority, using mm. a sword That's and right. chopping off the enemy. Yeah. You got to use your authority instead mm. of just standing there and waiting and say, I can't help it. The enemy will heal pounds all over you. 
and yeah. you'll just be a defeat all your life. And another thing is, it's not just a, something you do once in a while. Mm. Well, when I when I feel like I'll speak the promises of God, yeah. but it's speaking out the promises of God on a consistent basis. Consistent basis. See, like even a child, you know, hearing the voice of your father, right? Even in the natural, if you take um, a father and a son, it takes time for the child to recognize and mature to hear the voice of his father. Mm. But as he grows older and older, I mean, the father's voice becomes very natural and very recognizable. Yeah. It's the same way with God and us. We spoke about God becoming our father, being our father, and we are his children. Mm. So we, the more we fellowship with him and the more we grow in him, with him, we will be able to recognize his voice and his voice is his word. That's right. And so God will always say, fear not, I am with you always. Mm. I will never leave you. And when we speak those words out of our mouth on a consistent basis, you know, when, whether you feel like it or not, Sometimes I don't you're even... You're not going to feel like it all the time. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to feel, feel like, like it all it. the time. Sometimes you just feel like, I can't say it. I don't have any strength to say it. Mm. Your Sometimes feelings are going to be different. Just remember, just when I'm declaring other things, even if it's healing, you know, I would just speak it out of my mouth. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. At the same time, I would say, Lord, you have not given me a spirit of fear. Mm. So it's something you do on a very consistent basis and it grows within you. Mm. You're filling your heart with the right, words with the right things that's right. and it's going to come out and you're going to be a powerful person that's right and just before we close just on that last verse it says on this on the last same verse in the last part it says he's given us a sound mind mm. right god and the word sound means a disciplined mind yeah right you know that we have statements that sometimes people say i'm losing my mind i'm i'm i don't know i can't think i can't see straight but god says he gives he's given you a sound mind a mind yeah. that's disciplined Right, and now the place he says that he's given us the, us the uh, us the mind of Christ. That's right. right. So that we can think straight, we can we can think the right thoughts. Mm. Right. And so today, maybe you're battling a spirit of fear, in your um, you know whatever situations that you're facing. You you're saying I'm I'm fearful. How do I get rid of this fear? Right. Well, today you can repeat this prayer with us. It's a good, it's a bold prayer, and we're going to believe that that spirit of fear is going to leave and you're going to be set free. So just pray this out with us. Let's say, Father God, Father God, I thank you. I thank you. That you said in your word. That you said in your word. You've not given me a spirit of fear. You have not given me a spirit of fear. But of power. But of power. Love. Love. And a sound mind. And a sound mind. Today I believe. Today I believe. The spirit of fear is gone in Jesus' name. The spirit of fear is gone in Jesus' name. Your perfect love casts out fear. Your perfect love casts out fear. Thank you for the mind of Christ that you've given me. Thank you for the mind of Christ that you have given Thank me. Thank you for a sound mind. Thank you for a sound mind. I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it in Jesus' I name. I am set free from this day forward. I am set free from this day forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So believe that God has set you free and no longer does fear have to control you any longer. Praise Amen. God.